Welcome to Mastering Solutions. This physics problem gives us a car that's a thousand kilograms traveling at a speed of 40 meters per second, and they say that it skids to a halt on wet concrete with this coefficient of kinetic friction of 0.6. And we have to figure out just from that how long are the skid marks. So first, I drew the picture here so we can see what's happening, because as we've talked about in so many problems, the picture really does help to better conceptualize in your brain what's happening with a problem. So right here, we have a initial velocity they tell us of 40 meters per second, and they say that it's skidding to a halt. So the final velocity will, of course, be zero meters per second. The x initial we'll say is zero meters, and then we're going to see how far it goes. So our x final is what we're looking for. The mass never changes, which is 1,000 kilograms. And then they tell us that the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.6, or the mu sub k. So first, let's draw a free body diagram. So we have the car right here, and going up perpendicular to the surface is going to be the normal. And then down, straight down, is always the weight. Going backwards, we have the kinetic friction. So the car, since it's skidding, there's no force from the tires or the engine pushing it forward. So the acceleration in this case is going in the negative y direction. So what we should do next is we should sum the forces in the y direction. So we have weight going down and normal going up. So normal is positive y and the weight is in the negative y. And that will be equal to zero because it's not speeding up or slowing down in the y direction. So now we can move over the weight by adding it to the other side. So normal is equal to the weight. And of course, we can change the weight to mg. Now that we have the forces summed in the y direction, now let's use the force equation to figure out what we're trying to solve for. Before we get into all the math, conceptually what we're going to do is we need to figure out the acceleration here. And then we'll go back to previous chapter's content and we'll use a kinematic equation with that acceleration to figure out the answer of how long we went. So to find the acceleration, we'll of course use the force equation and it's only going to be in the x direction, so a sub x. We want to find the acceleration in the x direction, so let's divide both sides by the mass. So the acceleration in the x direction is equal to the force divided by the mass. So we can substitute the force though because the only force in the x direction is the kinetic friction. So when we change that, a sub x is going to be equal to the negative in the negative x direction, negative kinetic friction divided by the mass. And we can break this up even further. We have negative mu sub k times the normal divided by the mass. A sub x will be equal to negative mu sub k times mg because we sum the forces in the y direction. So we're substituting mg in here for the normal and then divided by m. If you look at this, we have mass on the top and the bottom, so that will cancel itself out. So finally, the very last equation for this is going to be equal to negative mu sub k times gravity. Plugging in our values, we have a negative 0.6 for the mu sub k, and of course a 9.8 meters per second squared for the gravity. So acceleration in the x direction is going to be 0.6 of gravity and that will be negative, so we have a negative 5.88 meters per second squared for our acceleration in the x direction. So now that we have the acceleration, now let's use a kinematic equation to solve for how long we went. We don't have any time though, so this should be a review that we have to use this kinematic equation right here, v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus two times the acceleration times the delta x. Now we could break this up even further, but we have x final minus x initial. So really x final is the same as the delta x in this case. The velocity final is zero and 
we will isolate the delta x, we'll move over this, so we have negative initial velocity squared is equal to two times a times delta x, divide both sides by two a, so coming up here, the delta x, or the x final, same thing for this instance, is going to be equal to the negative initial velocity squared divided by two times the acceleration. So now, plugging in our values, we have a negative initial velocity of 40 meters per second, and then that's squared, and then we're going to divide that by two times the acceleration, which we found was a negative 5.88 meters per second squared. So we have a negative 40 squared, and then all of that is divided by two times a negative 5.88. So the distance that we went is 136 meters, but putting that in for significant figures, we could say two significant figures, 136 meters, that'll be 140 meters for how far the car went as it was skidding on the wet concrete.